Hello everyone, so welcome back to my channel. Today we are doing a foundation review, but not just one. We are reviewing five different foundations and I got inspired to do this idea from a couple of people. I saw the Anna Edit did one recently uh, on six foundations that she tried out over six weeks and Jessica from Jam Beauty 89 she also did a kind of similar video where she was trying out five sort of new release foundations and kind of gave like mini reviews on each one and then a summary of the whole sort of process and I sort of talked in a video a couple of weeks ago to you guys about how I had kind of stopped doing foundation reviews for a while like most of this year I have not done any dedicated foundation reviews and that is because I just did so many in like 2017, 2018, I had this abundance of foundations in my drawer that I was just keen to either try and get through or declutter because it was just too much. And in doing that I felt quite wasteful just seeing how many bottles of foundation I'd only tried a few times, didn't like, and then they sat there and gathered dust. And I'm getting more and more eco-conscious as the days go on and I'm just trying really hard to find ways that I can still bring value to you guys, like review products, but in a way that feels a bit more sustainable for me. So one of those ways was to actually do foundation reviews like this where I review a foundation or a few foundations but review testers of them. So I mentioned I might do that in a video a few weeks ago, you guys were really keen so I picked up five little tester pots from Sephora and Mecca uh, a couple of weeks ago. I've managed to try each foundation about three or four times so I do feel like I've gathered quite a good grasp on whether the product worked for me or not. Obviously if I did own the product and had like an actual full size bottle I'd be able to try it a lot more. They're not first impressions but they're not really full reviews but I'll give you kind of a rundown on my thoughts. I hope you guys like this concept. Please let me know in the comments below if you think it's something I should keep doing I certainly don't need to keep doing like the sort of five foundations all at once sort of approach I could just do a single foundation but I'm feeling like the way the YouTube landscape's going at the moment that people are enjoying these kind of multi-product reviews rather than singular reviews but I could be wrong so I am very keen to keep doing this approach with using the samples because a it's a lot better for my wallet and B it's just so much better for the environment because I'm not buying a full size and then like disliking it and just having to get rid of it foundations are really hard products to like recycle here obviously because it's like hard to get all the product out um, and I can't donate a product once I've tried it in Australia anyway I'd have to send products like all the way to the US which again is not very economical for my wallet or very good for the environment because it's like more carbon with the freight transfer you get the point the best thing to do is just to try a sample see whether I like it and if I do then I'll go buy it obviously I can only do this approach though with higher end luxury kind of foundations because at the drugstore they don't give out samples here we can test things in store so I can at least tr hopefully try and pick out a decent colour for myself um, which I know you can't always do in the US um, so at least I can try and pick out a good colour but if I want to actually try the formula on my skin I do just have to buy it so I have purchased a couple of like more affordable drugstore kind of foundations to try um, probably in January I'll do those reviews but anyway enough rambling <laughs> let's begin so the five foundations that I am reviewing today are the Anastasia Beverly Hills luminous foundation the Fenty Beauty Pro filter hydrating foundation the Smashbox studio skin 24 hour full coverage foundation the Stila hide and chic foundation and the Tarte face tape foundation so these are all foundations that have been released I mean I want to say within the last year I think the Face tape might have been released a little earlier than that but I'd say most of these have definitely come out in 2019 so I thought that was kind of a good way to kind of theme this video. Maybe apart from the Stila, I haven't heard many people talk about that but most of them are pretty like hyped kind of foundations. I hear a lot of people talking about them and reviewing them. A couple of them are obviously more like sort of hydrating luminous focused and some of them are more matte. And it's really interesting, I just found the whole process really interesting because the one I ended up liking the most was maybe not the one on paper that I initially thought I would like. Uh, so I thought it was quite interesting. So this probably will be quite a long video, so if you haven't grabbed yourself a drink or a snack yet, I probably would. So the first one is the Anastasia Beverly Hills Luminous Foundation. This retails for 71 Australian dollars at Sephora Australia. It actually retails for $70 at Mecca. Don't know why there's a dollar difference, but that's just the way it is. I picked up my sample though from Sephora. You get 30 mils of product. Um, this one is a silicon based foundation. It's always a bit hard to tell whether a product is silicon based or water based because water will normally always still be the first ingredient in a silicon based foundation but from what I've been told it's kind of like if silicon's like the next ingredient you can kind of presume it's going to act like a silicon based 
foundation and therefore require a silicon based primer. It's fragrance free and essential oil free which I was really really stoked about. It comes in 50 shades with three different undertones, it's vegan, it's cruelty free and it claims to be a water resistant long wearing foundation with medium coverage and a radiant finish. So let's jump to a demo and you'll see my thoughts on that. <laughs> Alrighty so today I'm putting on the Anastasia Beverly Hills Luminous Foundation. I have the shade 110C which is the lightest cool tone shade that they have. They have another one 100N which is obviously more neutral so this one is meant to be a little bit more on the cool side. Now this foundation definitely definitely needed like the hourglass primer underneath. In fact like most of the ones in this test definitely do better with the hourglass primer but this one drastically needs it because it does not have very good longevity on its own so I'm just putting on a thin layer of the hourglass veil mineral primer it is definitely more of a liquidy foundation it's not really a cream or anything but it is thick enough that I would normally usually opt to use like a um, sponge or something with it but I actually found this one to apply a little bit better with a brush um, so that's what I'm going to use today. I use a Kabuki brush. This one's by Thin Lizzy. As you can see on my complexion is very yellow. So I feel like the shades in general, I've definitely heard this from other people as well, that the shades run very yellow. So what I do is normally like buff in circular motions, but then just pat it over just to get rid of any streakiness. And the reason I like a brush a little bit better is mainly because when I used it with a sponge, I just had to use so much product, like a lot of product, a lot more than normal. That is why I prefer a brush. Okay, so that is one layer there. <laughs> As you can see, it is so yellow. Like I just cannot understand how they can call this a cool shade. But the finish, let's talk about that, is beautiful. When you first put this on, it leaves such a nice radiant finish. It's not glitter or anything though, it just has a beautiful luminosity to it. So I love the finish. I've gotten a nice decent kind of high medium coverage. I can't really build this one up to full, but I don't think it needs it. It's just so beautiful, you kind of want it to look like skin. So I'll zoom you guys in, you can kind of see the actual foundation like on my skin texture. Alright, so that's what it looks like with the rest of my makeup on. I'll just quickly talk you through what else I used on my face. I popped a tiny bit of the L'Oreal Infallible More Than Concealer. I just did like a couple of dots, so it's not very much product, so that the foundation, we can really test that. And then I set my face very lightly with the Models Prefer Mineral Veil. I do find this foundation, I have to set it because... The times I didn't, it was like an absolute oil slick by within like a couple of hours. So I'm gonna set it with this and hopefully my makeup will last a bit longer. I also used a bit of the Chanel Cream Bronzer and one of these Sugar Ball Cushion Cheek Colors just for a little bit of blush. When I first apply this foundation, I always think it looks really gorgeous, except for the shade. It is a little bit off, a little bit yellow, um, but the actual finish of it is beautiful. It's just mainly the longevity that I struggle with because I do have a more sort of normal to oily skin type. Let's see how it goes today. I have a very long day. It is actually midday right now, but I do have a recording I've got to do late tonight, so I won't be home until at least 10 o'clock at the earliest probably. So the check-in will be very late. So I'm gonna be wearing this makeup for about 10 hours. Random little quick update. It's like 4.30. Um, so this has been on for a couple of hours now. And I have to say that the color is actually so much better now. Like, I've just got my violin on my back, by the way, heading off to this recording. But yeah, the color is actually, matching now very weird when it went on it looked so yellow but it's almost as if it's oxidized more pink slash peach like it's actually looking not so bad it's still maybe just like a fraction too warm but like really pretty good i've worn this foundation about four times so far and i've not experienced this kind of much of a change i wonder if it was the powder that i put on top of it the models prefer powder and the makeup's actually holding up a lot better than it normally does so i wonder if that powder is the trick <laughs> Alrighty, so it is literally midnight. <laughs> so this makeup's been on for nearly 12 hours. Hello dear, how are you? Hashtag no makeup. <laughs> no filter. <laughs> so our recording went for like the whole time plus a little bit extra. It was uh, really intense. It was hard work. Yeah, it was really hard work. Got I'm it done naked. though. Yeah, I'm shattered too. So I'm about to take my face off and thankfully I remembered to put this camera down in the bathroom so I wouldn't forget to film this before going to bed. Thank you pasta. Yes. Very thankful. Um, but yeah, so this is what the foundation is looking like after 12 hours. I know I look very shiny. I have a normal to oily skin type. It happens. 
but I must say that this foundation has definitely held up a lot better today than it has other days I've been testing it and I think it's because I used the hourglass primer and I powdered it made a big difference also it only got to about 17 degrees today so it was only like you know a very mild day it wasn't hot wasn't freezing cold I feel as if the other days that I was trying this it was a lot hotter and my makeup was just melting off like it has worn off a little bit with a little blemish there it's peeking through but like for the most part it's still pretty much on there just missing a little bit around my look, nose you do look pretty good thank you it's probably a foundation I would consider picking up next year maybe as we go into autumn because I think it's one that works better on my skin and like the cooler months I think in the heat it just seemed to melt off my skin but I'll keep trying the tester I've probably got one more use I'll try it again on a really really hot day and just see whether those you know using the primer using the powder would help it to last because I think it looks very beautiful right moving on to the Fenty Pro Filter Hydrating Longwear Foundation it's $52 Australian from Sephora AU for 32 mils probably the best value foundation I tried yeah the cheapest foundation and you get the most product so i think that in itself is really great um it is silicon based although the second ingredient is talc which i thought was very odd i haven't seen talc that high up on a list on a foundation in a long time which would kind of imply it had a bit more of an oil absorbing kind of quality to it but um just wanted to point that out there in case you don't like talc i still believe it is meant to act like a silicon based product this one is fragranced and heavily fragranced you will see my thoughts in the demo uh, mm, smells like vanilla uh, comes in 50 shades with three undertones which is amazing it's cruelty free I can't find any information as to whether it's vegan and I don't know ingredients that well enough to be able to like read through the list and know which products are animal derived or not so I'm gonna presume it's not vegan but it could be um, claims to be medium to full coverage long wearing and hydrating foundation with a smooth natural finish it specifically states that it's not meant to be dewy so it's meant to be like hydrating but satin sort of finish all right good morning everyone so i'm in a slightly different position in my bathroom today i'm standing up normally where i do like skincare videos and things because it's quite early in the morning it's like well not early but it's like eight o'clock and where i sit in front of the window normally the sun is just beaming through it's way too bright and just too sore in my eyes but i have to do this this morning so i figured i'd just stand here today we are looking at the fenty hydrating foundation and 110 is the shade i have they do have shade 100 which is more of a neutral sort of color and 105 which i believe is more warm um i have used 100 in the past uh, with their matte foundation it was okay but it probably was a little bit too on the yellow side so i thought i'd pick up 110 this time just to see whether this color is any better in store it seemed like it was going to blend in really well with my skin tone so i was expecting it to match perfectly it does feel though for me just a little bit light um since using it the last few days i feel like i put it on and i go I look a little bit too light like i'm kind of enjoying foundations that are not too dark for me but just not so ghostly like I think yes I can get a foundation to match my neck perfectly and so it does match well but for some reason it just makes me look really washed out and I think it's because naturally your face does have more color to it than your neck so to match your face perfectly to your neck you end up then looking quite artificial and sort of yeah quite mask like I can totally get away with it once I put the rest of my makeup on but I do feel like I just wish it was just like a fraction deeper yeah I've got some other foundations that I've been trying that like they're just like half a shade deeper and it's just enough just to bring a little more color to my face so not super super big fan on the color this one again is quite a liquidy sort of formulation but I do prefer this one with a sponge I thought it gives a nice kind of medium coverage finish uh, very sort of satiny sort of finish to it um, it has this really 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 strong kind of vanilla-y fragrance very similar to their primer and oh I just it's so strong guys like it's so strong I just find for me that is like the biggest thing that like, I hate about it <laughs> oh no I forgot to put down my hourglass primer oh well okay so this does wear, wear a little bit better with my hourglass primer underneath um, I will powder it that will help it to stop breaking down I did find that this actually didn't break down quite as much as the ABH during my testing over the last few weeks but um, yeah the hourglass primer does wonders um, yeah so you can kind of see like it definitely like blends in and matches but I just feel a little bit more ghostly than I normally like that gives a nice sort of medium coverage layer I might add a little bit more like on my nose where I've just got a little bit of redness coming through 
So you build up a little bit around here. I've still got so much product in this tester. They were just filling these up so well. It was awesome. <laughs> but I, um, I don't want to build it up too heavily though because I feel like with these kind of more glowy, lightweight sort of formulas, if you build them up, that's when they can start to look a bit too cakey. So I just want to slightly build it up on the areas that I need it. Alrighty, so this is what the foundation looks like on with the rest of my makeup. I'm just wearing the same kind of base products that I wore yesterday. I'm going to try and just use those products for this whole video. Just to eliminate some variables, um, I'll zoom you in so you can see a little bit of my skin texture. Yeah, so it sits really nicely. I do find it maybe looks like a little bit kind of interesting here, like it's kind of not sticking to my skin as well, but otherwise overall like I just think like this part looks amazing. <laughs> Alrighty, so it is 9.30, oh, I've had a really long day, I'm very tired, I'm actually going to go to bed now, but I just wanted to give you an update on this foundation. Unfortunately I didn't give it a very fair shot because I forgot to use the Hourglass Primer today, so it's definitely worn off a lot more than it normally does with that product, but um, yeah, it's just not looking too flash. Very chunky. It definitely does obviously look better with the primer at the end of the day, but I wasn't like super convinced on the other days anyway. There's just something about it that I'm not a huge fan of, and I think as well just the scent really throws me off, so not the most happy with this one. Alrighty, so number three, we are looking at the Smashbox Studio, if you're wondering, I'm looking down at my phone. The Smashbox Studio Skin Full Coverage 24 Hour Foundation. This retails for 55 Australian dollars at Mecca, and you get 30 mils. This is an interesting one, it's hydrocarbon based, which again, never really come across this in foundation reviews before. Things are usually silicon based, sometimes they're water based, occasionally they're oil based, but this I would have to call it a hydrocarbon based because it's literally just hydrocarbons at the beginning. Things like petrolatums. It's fragrance free and it comes in 36 shades, at least in Australia. And it claims to be a comfortable and lightweight long wearing full coverage foundation that controls oil and shine with a non acnegenic formula that's waterproof, sweat and humidity resistant. Alrighty, so welcome to day three. Today we are trying out the Smashbox Studio Skin, the full coverage 24 hour foundation. I love the Smashbox Studio Skin Hydrating Foundation. Um, I only tried this because I had a couple of you guys being like asking for my opinion on it. I kind of knew going in I was, probably wasn't going to like it. It is extremely full coverage, which I love a good full coverage, but it's just a little too matte for me. So for that reason, a hydrating primer is a must, otherwise it does look terrible. I tried it on top of my Hourglass primer and it just does not look good. So I'm going to go in with the Flower Beauty in your prime hydrating primer today. Definitely need to lay down a decent glowy base. It's a very thick creamy texture and I'm just going to spread this out a bit because I don't want too much. I'll just start with that and for sure I have to use a, a sponge with this because <laughs> we need to add a little a little bit of moisture to it. It just does feel a little bit too matte on my skin for my liking. I just am not a big fan of matte foundations. They feel very flat. And of course you can solve that by, you know, putting on a lot of highlighter and stuff and maybe a finishing powder, but yeah, it's just not my cup of tea. There we go. I'm not going to put on more than that. It was quite a light layer. Uh, it's giving me a solid full coverage. You can really build this one up to total coverage. It's like mask-like effect. <laughs> But I'll zoom you get guys in so you can actually see what it looks like sitting on my skin texture because this is where I'm just like oh, Not a huge fan Hopefully you can see but around like my forehead I feel like it just looks very dry and sort of like it's catching on like the dry top layer of my skin Alrighty, so that's what it looks like with the rest of my makeup on. I used all the same products as I normally do, except I did skip powder just because this is so matte on its own. And I also only used my concealer just a couple of dots under my eyes. Uh, I didn't really need it elsewhere because that foundation is so full coverage. This kind of matte finish always looks very flattering on camera, I do feel. You see that old footage of like news anchors being powdered in the T-zone and stuff, that's because matte skin does photograph and and film very nicely, like it makes you look obviously very perfected. So you're probably sitting at home being like, Anna, that one looks the best so far. 
And I understand, looking at my viewfinder, I'm like, my skin looks pretty perfect. But, it's just in real life, it is literally so dry looking. It looks like I've applied a really, really cakey kind of powder foundation all over my face. Not a big fan. Um, I feel like maybe even mixing this one with something more hydrating might work, but yeah, that's what it looks like. I'll check in with you guys at the end of the day. Alrighty, so it's about 10 p.m. at night now. This has been on for about 14 hours, so definitely put it through its test. As you can see, I have gotten pretty shiny throughout the day. It's not looking great. So the fact that it doesn't look super great at the end of the day, but looks in my opinion, not great at the start of the day either. It just looks so dry on my skin. And all day, if I just kept catching myself in the mirror, I just felt like I looked really flat. Like I actually prefer the kind of level of oiliness that's come through later today. I don't mind the oil, but the fact that it's also breaking up as well, yeah. Not a fan of this one. All right, so the fourth foundation we're looking at is the Stila Hide and Chic Foundation. This retails for 60 Australian dollars at Mecca and you get 30 mils. This one is silicon based. It's got no artificial fragrance, which is cool. And it comes in 30 shades. It's also cruelty free, although again, I can't tell whether it is also vegan. Uh, it claims to be lightweight, breathable, with a light to full coverage. <laughs> I loved that. They literally said like from the sheerest of sheer to the fullest of full. You could build it. It's meant to be cake free, flake free, humidity proof, blurring, smoothing formula with satin finish for all skin types. It sounds as if it's meant to be like the foundation for everyone. We'll see. So day four, here we go. Also check out my plants in the background. I'm giving them a little water today. So that's why they're all hanging out up there. But yeah, today I'm trying out the new Stella Hide and Chic Fluid Foundation. This one's been a little bit of a struggle for me. It's meant to be quite a lightweight kind of foundation that you can build up in coverage. Um, and is meant to look non cakey. It's meant to be like really luminous and stuff on the skin. Um, and I have the shade Fair One, which is quite sort of neutral. Um, in undertone, kind of a little bit peachy. But I am gonna go in with the Hourglass Veil Mineral Primer underneath with my normal to oily skin. I just feel like this definitely needs all the help it can get. It's quite a lightweight, sort of liquidy consistency. So I find that a brush actually does blend it in a bit better than a sponge, which just seems to soak it up completely. Like you guys know I love a sponge, but for this one, a kabuki brush is a bit better. For me, it's definitely got more of a light to maybe medium coverage. Like I cannot understand how you could get this to full without it just slipping and sliding all over your face. So it's definitely a bit more of a lighter coverage. That's what it looks like all blended in. I'll zoom in so you guys can see what it looks like on my skin texture. So the one thing I do like about it, it's got a very natural kind of skin-like finish to it. There's a little bit of radiance, but it does like kind of look like skin so I do love that. So that's what it looks like with the rest of my makeup on. The problem I have with this foundation is that I love the finish that it has when it is freshly applied but then once you do add powder and other things on top I don't think it looks as good um, but it absolutely needs that sort of thing to have any sort of longevity on my skin so. Alrighty so it is now about 10 p.m at night so this has been on my face today. When did I put this makeup on? I want to say about 11 o'clock so it's probably been on for about 11 hours or so it's actually looking better than it has before probably because i powdered and used the hourglass primer i'm not looking maybe as shiny as some of the other ones but it has broken down a bit chunky in places i'll show you so i don't know if you can kind of see around here it's broken up a lot around my nose around the chin this is very close and personal, but it's starting to break down quite a bit here in between my brows as well. Obviously, I was wearing my glasses today, so that wore off there. Every foundation wears off there, so it's not against this. It actually performed a lot better than other days, so it, it, you know, I don't feel like I look atrocious by the end of the day. But again, still not something I'm interested really in picking up for myself. And then finally, we're talking about the Tarte Face Tape Foundation, which this foundation, I think you'll remember from a while back, they originally had it, it was like the Shape Tape Foundation and they had two different styles and there was a huge screw up with the shades when they first released and it was awful and that caused a big controversy here in the beauty world. I believe they discontinued that whole thing, which is good. And just started from scratch again they created this one called the face tape foundation it's meant to be like the shape tape but 
full face. I think this launch was a lot more successful and a lot more inclusive from the looks of it. it retails for 62 Australian dollars at Sephora for 30 mils. I think it looks as if it's cheaper on the Tarte website as well, just FYI, but then you'd have to pay for shipping, so you just have to weigh that up. This one is a silicon based, it does contain artificial fragrance, but the fragrance isn't super strong. It's in there, but like it's not one that you can really smell on your skin once it's blended in. Comes in 50 shades with five different undertones, which is really cool. It's vegan and cruelty free, and it claims to be hypoallergenic, but it contains fragrance. I don't know about that. <laughs> Long wearing, full coverage with a natural matte finish, transfer proof, waterproof, sweat proof. Alrighty, final day, here we go. I think I might have left my favourite to last. But today we're talking about the Tarte Face Tape Foundation. This is in the shade 8B Porcelain Beige. I'm just putting on some of the Hourglass Veil Mineral Primer. Although this foundation didn't necessarily need a primer. It had really good longevity on me. This one is a liquid foundation. It's not creamy, but it is a little bit of a thicker liquid. Just your standard kind of liquid foundation texture, really. It does have a little bit of a floral fragrance. It's probably the only thing I really don't love about it, but it is a lot more subtle than something like the Fenty Beauty fragrance. I use a beauty sponge with this one. I find that it just gives it a nicer sort of satiny finish because this one is meant to have a natural matte finish. So I find applying with a damp beauty sponge just gives me a much nicer, fresher sort of finish that I prefer. I think this leans very much on the natural side of natural matte. <laughs> like for me, I'd call it more like a sort of satin matte because it's not matte like the Smashbox one where it looked really flat and cakey and horrible. It actually looks really flattering on the skin. It just doesn't have like too much of a glow, that's all. This is looking very light, but I actually found that this colour was one of the better colours that I tried as well, so once it's actually blended in, it's pretty good. I have applied a lot today, just so you can see how much coverage it, it can give, but I would normally probably apply a little bit less. And this is one that I felt like needs a lot of pushing into the skin with a damp sponge. When you first apply it on, it looks nice, but it looks like quite foundation-y. I find that just if you spend a bit more time, just keep going around your skin with the sponge. It's like it almost absorbs the excess product from the top of the skin and really pushes what is needed into the skin. And I think the finish gets better and better sort of the longer you sit there and push it into the skin. So I spend about two to three minutes doing this. So it does have that slight kind of glow to the skin, but it's nothing too radiant like the Anastasia Beverly Hills. It definitely is just a sort of satiny, natural sort of finish. Reminds me a lot of like the Long Contact Adult Ultra Wear, this foundation. So I'll zoom you guys in so hopefully you can see a little better, see some skin texture. And the colour match is really nice too, like I think the undertone is really good for me. It's very much a sort of muted, neutral, cool undertone. Um, so nothing too pink, but it certainly isn't yellow, it's just very just beige. I love it, as the name suggests, porcelain beige. Alrighty, so apart from a lip colour, this is what it looks like with the rest of my makeup on. I just think it looks really nice. It's a very flattering kind of finish on me, a satin finish, just because I do have that more normal to oily skin type, I find that it holds up for me throughout the day but it doesn't look as flat and cakey and sort of heavy and drying as some of those true kind of matte finishes so I'm really really happy with this this one. Uh, I will check in with you guys at the end of the day and then we will wrap this video up. Alrighty so it is now like 10 p.m at night so my makeup's been on for about 12 hours. Still looking pretty good obviously it's worn off like a little bit around my nose they all do I am looking a bit shiny, but the foundation isn't really breaking down as such, which I really appreciate. Alrighty, so my final thoughts. Out of these five foundations, the only one that I am like 90% sure I'm going to go out and purchase is the Tarte the one I'm wearing today, the Tarte Face Tape Foundation. This one just for me reminds me so much of the Long Contact Adol Ultra Wear. It's got that long wearing ability, like it doesn't cake up, it doesn't do weird stuff throughout the day, but as you can see, it doesn't look flat on my skin. Like, there's a bit of a glow there and it just looks like quite satiny, but not like 
overdone. I just think the finish is beautiful. The colour, porcelain beige, is like a perfect match for me. <laughs> the Anastasia Beverly Hills for me came in at number two and that was the one that I'm like, I might consider getting it. Initially I was like, nah, no way because the shade was just so wrong. But honestly, it does kind of adapt to your skin after a little while. I think it actually oxidizes for the better <laughs> with my skin type anyway. So yeah, it actually looked quite nice. Uh, certainly doesn't have the longevity that my skin needs for an all day wear, but I think if I wanted just a really beautiful, like medium coverage, skin-like look for just like an afternoon or an evening, then it would be something that would be nice. But I sort of do have foundations kind of like that already in my collection. We'll see how we go. I would probably give third place to the Stella foundation. I didn't love this foundation at all, but I certainly didn't hate it in the end. Initially, day one, I hated it. I just couldn't make it work for me because I wasn't using a primer or anything, and it just like slid off my face. But I think with the Hourglass Primer, with the Models Prefer Mineral Veil Powder, on top it actually looked quite nice it actually held up a little bit better for me i'd probably give that one a pass as well fourth place i'd probably have to give to the fenty beauty foundation the scent of that one was the major thing that i was like nah i couldn't handle that i also struggled a little bit more with the shade i felt like i didn't feel good in it like i feel really good in this shade so and again it didn't have like the best longevity on me either i definitely wouldn't bother picking that one up and then finally <laughs> The most duddiest one of all was the Smashbox one. Um, and I'm not surprised because I love their Studio Skin Hydrating Foundation so much. I think that's a fantastic formula. Um, so the fact that that's the hydrating version that I love and then their super matte kind of like long wearing full coverage stage makeup essentially uh, is so contrasting that yeah I didn't like that one. This Tarte one is meant to be a matte finish but it's definitely more of that like natural matte satiny kind of finish uh, which my skin loves but anything too powdery looking on the skin and it just ages me drastically and I know it didn't look probably quite as bad in camera as it did in real life because I feel like matte finishes do look quite flattering in photography and film in real life I honestly felt like about five or six years older like it was like every fine line on my face showed up whereas like with this foundation I feel like it kind of plumps my skin a little bit and I look a little bit more youthful with it so that one was a real pass for me. <laughs> this was such a helpful video for myself. Like I'm thrilled. I know which ones I'm, you know, got my eye on now and which ones to completely avoid. Gives you guys a bit of an idea in case you have a similar skin type or skin tone to me and you want some advice around buying foundation. Um, but that's it for me. So if you want to interact with me before my next video, make sure you pop over to my socials. I have Instagram, Facebook, Twitter, and Pinterest. And also pop over to my website, lifebyarnaelaine.com. I do have a new blog post on there. You might have already read it. I'm going to be a little bit less active on there this month. December is always a very busy month for YouTube, so it's going to be a little quiet there. And then I think January it's going to pick up again. But make sure you sign up to the mailing list as well so that you can get my January newsletter that's going to come out. But yeah, once again, thank you guys so much for watching, and I'll talk to you soon. Bye!